Good evening, friends. I'm Dr. Ajay Shah, bringing you another great, great, great live tonight. I have a, I have a two special guests actually, a couple, which you will be absolutely impressed the work they do and how much they contribute to people's well-being. Let me quickly give you a page update. We are now more than 100,000 followers from all over the world. We are also doing this live cooking demonstration with my wife, so please stay tuned for that. We're also uh, very active on YouTube, so please reach out to our YouTube channel, uh, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. We have almost about 200 videos now, and we are bringing this various guests on a regular basis. So, you know, we definitely are busy. We are trying to help all our followers and help ourselves to be healthy and to grow as a successful person. So let me tell you about two of our guests. Those are Dr. Chawla, Dr. Munish Chawla and Dr. Banna Chawla. They both are board certified lifestyle physicians. They actually are great, great community leaders in Houston. They both are lifestyle coaches. They're great speakers. I've listened to them many times. They actually been to many, many recent virtual talks. They have received actually many, many awards. And they actually are featured into many documentaries. So it's kind of an honor to have both Dr. Banna Chawla and Dr. Munish Chawla on our page. So welcome, welcome Dr. Chawla. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for all that you do with educating our community and helping us get healthy. Thank you, thank you. It's a real privilege for you to have this platform that you know, we can contribute to. So we're really oh, honored you. to be here today. Yeah, thank you. So let's start with the first question. Where are you located? Where do you live now? And what kind of practice setting you're in? Um, so we are in Houston, Texas. And I have been doing internal medicine for about 20 years. Um, but recently, we both got very passionate about the new field of lifestyle medicine. And 2018, we both took the board exam and got board certified in lifestyle medicine. And I will let my husband tell you what happened, but somehow exactly one year ago, we both started a new clinic called lifestyledocs.com. And actually yesterday was our one year anniversary of having seen first patients at our new clinic was August 21st, 2019. So it's been a year. That is impressive. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I took my board in 2018 also in India. Oh. I think uh, I saw both of you in person. I don't think we knew each other that well, but I remember yeah. seeing both of you. So, uh, oh. so Dr. Manish Chala, you were a radiologist, right? Am, am, I, am I correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm still sort of working PRN off and on when business gets a little slow. But yeah, I was, I've been a radiologist for, gosh, 20 almost, years. over 20 years. And, you know, this all started that Bandana got introduced to lifestyle medicine. And she says, I'm going to study for this boards. And, you know, we take our evening walks. And she's telling me that even before she had taken the board, she would be trying to get, you know, diabetics and hypertensives off of their medications and trying to get them to eat healthy. And she would say, so and so is off of insulin now. So I'm, you know, already kind of getting excited. And then when she started studying for the boards, I just said, you know, I'm going to look at this too. So I said, this is good material. This is healthy living. I'm going to learn about it too. So we had really no plans. And one thing led to another. I said, okay, I'm going to take the board exams also. And at that time, we had no intention of opening this clinic. I mean, I was happy doing radiology and, you know, we were doing just nights and weekends, just educating people here and there. But, you know, the more I do this, the more it's enjoyable, the more you see the results that this stuff is so effective and it's so simple that, I mean, I just enjoy this so much more. I mean, I love radiology. It was a wonderful career. I still like it, but I, I don't have the passion for radiology that I do for lifestyle medicine. And so and this is my full-time job now. Yeah, that's an excellent point you made. And I feel same way coming from cardiology. And I think, uh, you know, that uh, being a radiologist, coming back into clinical medicine, seeing patients, 
particularly coming into lifestyle medicine, which is uh, still a growing field, I really, really commend you. I mean, uh, I mean that's actually uh, very exceptional. I mean, radiology to lifestyle medicine, radiology to lifestyle medicine, I can understand, but mm -hmm. radiology to lifestyle medicine is a difficult path. So I very, very congratulate you. And obviously, you know, you are a great supporter of Banna. So I think it makes sense that uh, yeah. you know, I think as a team, it, as a team it's always- Dr. A um, Shah, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, when he was making this change, there were so many people telling him from both perspectives. One was that radiology is a well-paying job. Why are you leaving such a good job? And then there were another set of people telling him, you know, you've been happily married for 21 years. Why do you want to mess it up by going into business with your wife? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you made a very good point. The only reason I'm able to do what I, what I can do is because she has an internal medicine practice. So I can slide right in and, you know, kind of share the load of the lifestyle medicine, you know, portion of it. You know, doing it all alone by myself would be very difficult. So, you know, all this is possible because of my wife. So definitely, definitely, definitely. So let's talk just about 20 minutes about the six pillars of healthy lifestyle. And then I want to talk 35, 40 minutes about your practice because a lot of the lifestyle physicians and a lot of the other physicians who are actually thinking about doing lifestyle with or without board certification, they will learn so much from your model. But I still want to cover 20 minutes for our general viewers about six pillars. So let's start with healthy eating. Please tell us about healthy eating and role in uh, preventing and reversing chronic disease. Sure, you wanna start? Sure. Um, so of the six pillars, um, I feel like this is the most important uh, because nutrition is something that we do three, four, five times a day. Um, we put things in our mouth um, and everything that we put in our mouth um, is either going to hurt our health or help our health. There are no neutral foods. So nutrition is a really big component and lifestyle medicine, as, as you know, is an evidence-based field. Um, and the evidence is clear that what we should be eating is a predominantly whole food plant-based diet. Um, so 90 to 95% of our calories should be coming from whole plant foods. Yeah, that's you know, this is not, so, sorry, Dr. Shah, go ahead. Go ahead, please, Malishia. So this is not something that's controversial. You know, you look at the World Health Organization, American Institute of, you know, Cancer Research, and all of them, you know, the American Dietetic Association, all of this say that there may be a little wiggle room, whether you're eating a plant-exclusive diet or 95% of your calories come from plants. So all the major organizations, American College of Cardiology, they all say the same thing, that we need to eat more plants. We need to reduce our saturated fat, which is basically saying we need to reduce our animal foods. We need to you know, uh, move more exercise, but I know we'll get into that, but you know, sticking to nutrition, there's really no controversy. And when I talk to some of my colleagues, it's like this is something new that they're hearing for the first time. But I tell them, you know, look at your guidelines from your societies. Everyone says eat more fruits and vegetables, eat a variety, eat the rainbow, eat legumes, whole grains, nuts and seeds. These are the foods in all the major studies, all the science that we have, you know, they, uh, increase our age, lead to longevity, good health. And the data is out there. It's just you know our job to kind of educate not just the general public, but a lot of the physicians. So we love that you have this platform that you know this information gets out. And that's an excellent point. I think, uh, I mean, if you look at all the data, the, da the answer is very clear. And if you look at the, even the long term, like not just for 50, 60 years, but three, four, 500,000 years, if you look mm -hmm. at the blue zones, you know, they typically eat 90% calories from whole food, plant-based food. I mean, uh, I mean that that's just the longest data we can find. I mean, okay, now any any blue zone for that sake. So I think uh, we don't need to just rely on a 50-year-old science. We have hundreds of years of uh, evidence based on longevity and not just longevity, but also health span too. I think, uh, you know, the, the six pillars not only make you live long, but even last 10 years, 10 years of your life are so much productive and so much fun compared to last 10 years with a walker or a nursing home and multiple surgery. So I think, let's talk about physical activity in terms of a second pillar. So physical activity, I tell all my patients that you know lifestyle medicine really wants you to be 
experience holistic health. And you need to eat the right foods, that's the foundation, but you need to add some physical activity. Even if you're eating the best foods but just sitting on the sofa watching TV for six hours, that's not gonna bring you, you know, good health, not gonna bring you holistic health. So we were put on this planet, you know, we've always been moving. This modern lifestyle where we live in little, you know, boxes and, you know, go and travel in other boxes, this is relatively new. All our human history, we've been out moving around, you know, gathering mostly. I know people say hunting, gathering, but it was mostly gathering and, you know, some farming and that sort of thing. But we were outdoors, we were active. And this is the way our body is designed to run. I mean, exercise, you know, some people say it's going to boost your metabolism. It may do that a little bit, but I tell my patients, that's not the reason I want you to put exercise every day in your life. The reason I want you to do it, it's going to bring you better health. It's going to, you know, bring you better mental health, better uh, mental clarity. So when you feel good, your stress hormones are reduced, any change that you're going to make it's going to be so much easier. So when you get the endorphin rush from, you know, from a walk or, you know, doing any sort of aerobic activity, you remember, your brain remembers feeling good. And when you do something that feels good, it just naturally builds. So when you're practicing healthy lifestyle, I cannot underestimate, you know, how important it is to include exercise and physical activity. No, I think I agree. I think well, you know, American College of Lifestyle Medicine recommends that we do at least 150 minutes a day, preferably 300 minutes, um, 150 minutes a week, uh, preferably 300 minutes a week. And then after 420 minutes a week, it kind of plateaus off in terms of benefits. Um, and all three parts are um, recommended. So we want to get our cardiovascular endurance part. We also want to do our flexibility and balance part. And we also want to do our strength and resistance um, training, which we have not done very well. Mm -hmm. um, so my first 45 years of my life, I did no strength and resistance training. Um, it's recently in the last year or so that we're like, we have to practice what we preach. Um, and we know that that aspect is important as well. So now we're adding that to our um, weekly routine. No, that's an excellent point. And I agree. I think healthy eating is the foundation. And they said that physical activity adds as a supplement to that foundation. So I think physical activity never is going to be the primary way of staying healthy. Primary way is healthy eating. And then physical activity and all other pillars are the supplements. So I think I agree. Plus, I think in Blue Zone, I keep repeating that people mm -hmm. don't go to gym. They just move every hour. The garden they mow the yard, they go to their friend's house walking, they go to grocery store walking, you know, they're vacuuming their house, they're cleaning their kitchen and windows. So I think we are not asking people to bang the knees one hour on a treadmill. We are asking to just have an hourly purposeful movement, either in the house or even at a work. Most mm -hmm. workplaces actually would allow you to get up for five minutes and go for a stroll. I mean, we're just asking for, like you said, uh, about 25, 30, maybe 40 minutes a day of some kind of physical activity. So let's talk about sleep, another important pillar. So sleep is something that again is very important. And as you mentioned, you know, all of these work synergistically. When you get the food part right, when you exercise, and if you add healthy sleep to that, sleep is where we repair, the body repairs itself, whether it's our you know, physical body or emotional body or mental health. So this is something that's really important. And if we don't get adequate sleep, it can raise our stress hormones. And that's another form of stress. You know, when we're eating unhealthy foods, it creates stress for the body. When we're not moving, it creates stress for the body. When we're not able to sleep well, it creates stress for the body. So when we sleep well, we can repair all the damage we did during the day, whether it's physical damage, emotional damage, and there's so many studies showing that, you know, when you get good quality sleep, it decreases your stress hormones. And I really stress that to my diabetic patients because I tell them you're doing everything right. But if you're not sleeping well, your stress hormones are higher. That means your sugar in the blood is higher. If that blood sugar is higher, that means more insulin is needed to take care of that sugar. So if you want to reduce your dependency on insulin and other, you know, diabetic medications, you need to get a good night's sleep. So I think, 
So I think sleep, I agree with you. I think sleep is important. And I actually now ask my patients to have some kind of a measured sleep uh, technique because many of us don't realize that we don't get seven, seven and a half, eight hours of sleep until we measure it. And that's mm -hmm. where this cost-effective device like Fitbit, $69 can easily give you feedback. How was your sleep on a weekly basis or monthly basis? Because we all have some late nights, we are on call or we are working mm -hmm. late, whatever the reason. But mm -hmm. average sleep per week or per month should be seven to eight hours. You know, that brings the next topic, which uh, you've been keep uh, asking and telling us about the stress management. And again, all pillars actually are kind of based on how stressed we are, because when we are stressed, we are not in mood to eat healthy, we have emotional eating, we don't exercise, we sit around. So stress management is very important. So please tell us what is the importance of stress management for an individual, for a person, and for how do you manage your stress as physicians? Yeah, so that's a really good point because I feel like all of us are stressed, whether it is healthcare professionals or the patients that we see. Um, and when I go over the six pillars of lifestyle medicine with my patients, I really point out that a lot of us over time have turned to comfort foods as our stress management, or we've turned to tobacco or alcohol or substance abuse as our stress management. And part of what I um, tell them is my job as a lifestyle medicine doctor is to give them healthy, new stress management tools because I don't wanna take away their tools that are working for them, um, that are um, helping them get through life um, without giving them new tools. So part of um, our job as lifestyle medicine doctors is to teach healthy, stress management tools so then they don't have to turn to comfort foods and they don't have to turn to alcohol and, and smoking. Um, yeah, and you wanna talk about how we do that? And, and the tools that my wife is referring to, you know, the healthy tools are any way that'll reduce your stress in a healthy way. So things like yoga, even exercise, you know, meditation, mindfulness, gardening, even walking. So any of those things are gonna reduce our stress hormones. And I'm personally passionate about mindfulness meditation, but I tell my patients, if you know, listening to music or playing to music or even doing a jigsaw puzzle, if that allows you to get out of the rat race, allows you to de-stress and just kind of be in the moment, enjoy what you're really doing, that's really the whole point of this. We wanna not just be constantly thinking about work or family or this stress or that stress, anything that allows you to just kind of get out of that rat race mentality works. So if gardening is good for you, do gardening. If you're interested in meditation, I'm happy to introduce you to it. Even just breathing, taking deep breaths. I mean, there's a whole science of pranayama that's, you know, that we've learned from the ages, which is so effective in stress management. So a lot of my patients, they're not ready for meditation just yet. They said, okay, doc, I'll do breathing exercises. So that's what we start off with. And like my wife mentioned, all of these are healthy tools to manage your stress. You know, being in the modern society, being with, you know, in traffic and job and kids and families, we're going to encounter stress. It's not stress itself is bad, it's how we react to stress. So when we're using healthy tools to manage our uh, stress effectively, those same things can actually help us grow, actually help us be more resilient. And really, it's just I, you know, both of us are really passionate about. If you want to make any sort of positive change, you got to get the mental part right. And you know, getting good stress management is so important. You know, thank you very much for bringing that up. No, I think uh, that's an important thing. I remember Dean Ornish. He was uh, telling that uh, when a person comes to him, patient comes to him and says that, Doc, I have this uh, pack of cigarettes with 20 friends in that pack. Mm -hmm. And if you were to take my 20 friends away, give me something. And yeah. like Dr. Yeah. Banna Chawla said, we cannot take it, their friends or their fun away. You know, we need to add or some, we cannot delete, we have to substitute. And that's mm -hmm. what I think your tools and your techniques are pretty much very important to give it to the patient instead of just saying, you know, I think it becomes so kind of almost non-productive when we say stop drinking alcohol. We cannot stop there. We have to say what they can do instead of just stopping and stop drinking alcohol. So those techniques, you know, fortunately I'm learning and you are learning 
that as we go through lifestyle medicine, as we go through board certification, as we listen to other people, other speakers, we realize that some of the techniques we learn as a traditional uh, physicians, internal medicine, radiology, cardiology, we did not have all this coaching and all these tools before I became a lifestyle physician. So I think this is very important. Other physicians need to start realizing that we cannot just be a robotic doctors and just mm -hmm. ask people to do things. We have to literally coach them. So, you know, I think that brings the next uh, pillar, which is a substance abuse and alcohol. We partly covered it, but please tell us just a brief, uh, briefly about how we can overcome that. So substance abuse and alcohol is um, usually a little bit harder than the usual things in primary care that I help patients with in lifestyle medicine. And some of them do require rehab. Um, so I give them resources on where they can go for rehab. Um, and again, you know, it's kind of telling them that we understand what caused them to get there, that this was a tool that helped them but now with the holistic approach of lifestyle medicine, where they're going to change their diet and exercise um, and sleep, they can definitely have a um, better opportunity to get off of substance abuse with our help and professional help as well. And we make, you know, a lot of these tools available, you know, at our clinic. So, you know, we do regular meditation sessions before the pandemic started. We had uh, regular yoga classes at our clinic. So all these tools, you know, I know someone who has a serious addiction, they do need rehab, they need professionals in that field, but things that we can kind of get them help get started. And, you know, it's not a substitute for professional, you know, rehab, but certainly make them at least aware that there are other ways that they can manage their stress. There are other healthy ways that they can use. So just, you know, part of just awareness, just bringing people, you know, more knowledge on what things work and they don't have to rely always on cigarettes and alcohol or other substances. Yeah. Uh, and let's just briefly talk about the relationship because I want to really listen to you about your practice model. That's like the main, main thing I want to discuss today. So let's briefly cover the relationship pillar. So part of what we want to do with our clinic is to provide the community. Um, so many people out there want to make this change, but it's so hard because healthy choice, like you like to say, is not the easy choice mm -hmm. in our society. Whereas, like you mentioned, the blue zones, Dr. Shah, there the healthy choice is the easy choice because everybody else is practicing healthy habits too. Whereas here, we really want to provide that community so they can hang out with other people who are also moving in this direction. Um, other people who are also trying to eat more plant-based foods, other people who are also trying to bring other pillars of lifestyle medicine in their lives. And we do that by providing free meditation. Um, we were doing uh, potlucks at our clinic once a month. So where our patients would bring in plant-based dishes and give each other recipes and hang out with each other and eat healthy foods. Um, walk with a doc where we would once a month go walk at a park and talk about a topic and move together, uh, be outdoors together. Um, and then various seminars, yoga classes, as you mentioned, we were about to start strength training classes. But now with the uh, pandemic, we are doing all of these things virtually. So actually anybody out there is welcome to join us. Uh, meditation is always first and third Saturday of the month at nine o'clock. Walk with a doc is always second Saturday of the month at nine. Well, we just changed it to eight o'clock because it was so hot in Houston. Um, and potlucks are always first Sunday of the month at one o'clock. And then we have various free seminars that come on as well. No, well, that's an excellent point you made. And actually, I, I kind of love it that you went in relationship pillar beyond just the spouse and the family. I think uh, we need much bigger than just our own family to, you know, to be successful in this healthy lifestyle. We, like you said, we need almost whole community. And you pointed mm -hmm. out in the very right way, Blue Zone, it's very easy to have those healthy choices. I think in some of our neighborhood, I think it's very hard. And that's mm -hmm. where our family alone cannot do it. We need even-minded family around us, including our church, including our temple. So I think you are creating that community movement. And that's a reason. I think uh, 
it's very commendable. You are not just stopping at your patient. You're not stopping at your patient's family. You are moving in the whole community. So let's start now diving into your practice model. That's a really impressive, impressive thing you have done. So please tell us the, like, uh, what type of staff do you have? Like, do you have a nutritionist? Do you have a, a physical therapist or an exercise uh, physiologist or a personal trainer? And so uh, the staff is, we have a uh, nurse who is, uh, is she certified in lifestyle medicine? Or no, she, she's uh, becoming a health coach. She's becoming a health she's coach. She's very passionate about lifestyle medicine. Yeah, so I mean, she. everybody in our office is either working towards getting lifestyle medicine certified or they're already certified. We have a holistic coach. Uh, she's a holistic nutritionist, actually. And she's working on exercise physiology. She's becoming a personal trainer. Personal trainer. So she can help our patients with that. With aspect. the exercise aspect. And I am currently, so it's the four of us. We have a nurse who's passionate about lifestyle medicine, a holistic nutritionist. Wellness coordinator, we call we her. We call her wellness coordinator. And I'm taking a uh, health coach uh, course myself just so that I can become more well-versed. You know, my clinical skills are a little bit rusty. And, you know, a lot of people get it. They say, I see the data, I see other friends and family and other people that are making this change and they're feeling better and they're you know looking better, but it's really hard, doc. I, I can't seem to do it myself. So part of my challenge is to get them to really see, you know, get their values and goals aligned so they can really move further. And you know, as we talked right now, that community is so important. If I have five or six patients that are struggling, but if we get them in a group session, everybody mentions their struggles and they're helping out each other. They're problem solving for the other person. And then they see, okay, you know, everyone's having some sort of issue when they first get started, but they, you know, stay together. And, you know, over weeks, they all make so much wonderful progress. You know, anything that I can do in a personal coaching session, you know, it's so much more that we can do in a group session. So now our group sessions are virtual. You know, we do it, you know, once a month. And, you know, as more uh, of our patient population grows, we'll do more because I found that really valuable. You know, when they're helping and teaching each other, it's, you know, really helps. So, Dr. Shah, let me clarify our model for you. Um, basically, I am primary care physician, internal medicine. So I take most every insurance. So pe people usually see me for primary care. And then I also, of course, bring in lifestyle medicine to my primary care practice. But the patients who really want to work on lifestyle medicine programs to reverse diseases like diabetes reversal, weight loss, um, autoimmune disease reversal, um, they then I refer them to him and he is actually right now not taking insurance and it is self-pay. So um, they see him for a more intense immersion like program. So our immersion programs are something like, you know, for diabetes reversal, it's a 12 week program where we take them, you know, from their current diet, we slowly transition to a whole food plant-based diet. If they're struggling with exercise, we make sure they get support and get them on an exercise program. They all start off with breathing exercises or other healthy tools of stress management. We provide them a healthy community. It's like you're not doing this alone. There are other patients in the practice who are doing this. So you get support from us and support from other patients. So when you kind of surround them, and I see them at least every two weeks, there's phone contact, text messages, so if they're at a you know restaurant and they're having a hard time with the menu, I tell them just text me. Instead of you know choosing the wrong food, just ask me. There's usually some sort of alternative you can get at that restaurant which is going to be healthy and you know going to support the goal that you want as opposed to you know kind of sliding back. So it's really I'm really fortunate to be able to do that because I'm working with my wife, so it works real well. No, I think uh, this uh, this kind of model is a kind of a unique model where you have a physician who takes care of some of the acute problems, including blood sugar of 500, including mm -hmm. acute UTI, whatever needs to be done. Mm -hmm. At the same time, once a person is done with that acute problem, has an immediate availability of a, a, a health coach 
a physician health coach in your practice who can actually guide the person through to reverse some of the chronic disease. So I think uh, this kind of model actually will become one day a popular model where there is a physician, but there are also health coach. You know, not all health coaches will be physicians. You know, you are fortunate you have a physician health coach, but a lot of small practices eventually will have a health coach who will actually guide some of the chronic diseases while physician is, because we already have a shortage of physicians. So we need <laughs> physicians to take care of acute problems. But we need a almost like a, a, a health coach who is certified through lifestyle medicine. And we brought actually Ruben Guzman from California, who was actually one of the earliest, earliest, he went through like a medical school for a year or two, and then he quit. And he became a lifestyle coach for about 25 years and he actually was one of the earliest lifestyle medicine uh, college certified lifestyle coach. And he was on our page and he sounded just like an internal medicine physician. So much knowledgeable, so much well read, so much quoting all the studies. So I think we need a model like yours, but there is a physician and there is a health coach. I think that's mm -hmm. the best way. Uh, so you are ahead of time. So that's a great, great uh, achievement, great achievement. So if, uh, if uh, anybody wants to kind of take advantage of your program, is it limited to Houston, Texas, or pretty much all over the country now? So I am limited to Texas. Uh, my state license is in Texas, so I can only see patients in Texas. His model, because it's different, um, well, why don't you, he can see people anywhere. Right, so since I'm you know, cash-based at this point, I'm not dealing with any insurance companies. So when I do patients outside of Texas, I do it just like you described. I do it only in the capacity of a health coach. So I'm, I say I need a physician, you know, let's say Tennessee. I said, I need your primary care physician to buy into this because I'm going to suggest that, you know, your sugars are going to come down, but I want them to reduce the medications. I'm going to be like a health coach and I'm going to kind of guide you everything that we can do in clinic. We can certainly do online on, you know, on Zoom. We, you know, we're using a UpDocs platform, but any sort of online platform. So they have access to me. They have access to a wellness coordinator who's a holistic nutritionist. Also, some, you know, she's uh, getting into exercise physiology. So they have all these resources available to them on an online basis. So since I can work in that capacity, and, and I'm not sort of hamstring by the insurance company so I can actually see everyone in the United States and we actually have a client in Connecticut right now so you know we're hoping to get more clients outside of Texas. Well, this is very exciting I think uh, this kind of model I think will thrive more and more because we are realizing that coaching can be done remotely from anywhere and mm -hmm. coaching doesn't require acute care. I think coaching typically is done for chronic diseases and mm -hmm. chronic diseases are typically not an emergency. Obviously they can lead into emergency, but typically they require, you know, weekly or monthly, you know, and plus I think your dedication to answer the text and answer the email, answer the phone calls. I think those kind of dedication, to be honest with you, is rare. Even many health coaches don't have that kind of dedication. Actually, I'm like that too. I All my patients have my number. If they have a question, they can call me or text me and I just answer them because no patient ever will abuse a nice, kind physician. You know, I think yeah. if you provide the nice, kind relationship, they also understand that you are busy, you are family, and no patient ever in last 25 years of my practice has ever abused. So I think I commend you for providing the tax support also. So that's a... You know, that brings the next uh, thing. You both are also busy in your community also in terms of a uh, lot of the community writing in the newspapers, community awareness, church lectures, temple lectures. So please tell us activity because in my opinion, as a lifestyle physician or for that sake, any physician or health coach, staying involved in the community is not just good for business, but also good for community's well-being. So please tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, so Dr. Shaw, like you, we are just so passionate about this that we just want to get the word out. Um, so if uh, Temple contacts us, or we've I've spoken to Rotary Club um, before, or whoever, Vegan Society of Peace here, um, whoever really wants to hear this, we are happy to go out and talk about it. Um, yeah, because 
and 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 our events too, like meditation, they don't have to be our patients to come um, for potlucks and for group sessions. They do have to be our patients, but pretty much all other events, it, they're open to the community because we really want everybody yeah. to have access to this information. Yeah, and you know, we've done uh, movie screenings at local libraries, mm -hmm. and we've done talks at local libraries. Mm -hmm. So basically, anything, and we work with other members that you know we are really uh, we have a food for life instructor who is really passionate about this so she has a church that she goes to so we said yeah we'd be happy to speak there and she does cooking classes for free a lot of times at these events because she's also passionate anyone mm -hmm. who will eat plant based you know she will go to their home and cook if that's what it takes so we're surrounded by wonderful people around us who support us you know we have yoga teachers that used to come to our clinic. And actually she did a couple of uh, yoga classes even virtually. So we have a wonderful community that works with us and we all sort of work together to get this message out just in the same way as you're doing. And it's really enjoyable, it's fun. And you meet new people who've never heard of that, you know, but diabetes can be reversed, who've never heard that they don't need to take pills for the rest of their life. And they really are amazed that their doctor hasn't mentioned this to them. I said, the data is there. So it's just wonderful to have that kind of impact. And we really enjoy it. And it's, it's so rewarding, as you know. Yeah, I think the, the comment I like to make for both of you is that every lifestyle physician I've seen, not only the exuberant, there's so much energy and so much joy. And they don't look to me like they're burned out. They, I feel mm -hmm. like lifestyle physicians themselves are so happy to do this thing. They are not just, uh, you know, like uh, working, but they're actually totally passionate about it. And I think I've seen, we had a, somebody just last week, Dr. Kotardi, uh, uh, who actually talked about physician burnout. And I think I, I personally believe that since I became a lifestyle physician, I'm much more better taking care of myself. So I think uh, this is, you know, like you said, Dr. Banna Chawla said that we are our own patients first. We have to walk the talk. You know, that brings my next important question. Many times it's questioned that when we do this uh, free social media or church lectures or temple lectures or rotary club lectures, many times some physicians kind of worry that we are giving out a lot of information at no cost to the patient and that might hurt our business. I'm actually not, I'm opposite of that thinking. I think that actually will increase our business because mm -hmm. Patients always will need physicians. They can do certain things themselves, but they will always need physicians. So what is your what is your view on that? Yeah, no, I mean, we completely agree. I mean, part of this just awareness. If someone doesn't know that their diabetes can be reversed, I mean, they're not going to come knocking on your door, like reverse my diabetes. So part of it's, you know, getting the word out that these things can be reversed. And part of it as being a lifestyle physician, I mean, this is a young field. This is something we all want to grow. This is something that's worked in our life. And when something, you know, works in your life, you want to share this message. So this is something, you know, this uh, message of health, of hope, of community. This is hard to put something a price on. This is something, it's like a labor of love. So, you know, I don't think the business is going to decrease. It's going to increase uh, when we do this. So I'm not concerned about that at all. But, you know, at the end, we all became physicians. We wanted to help people get better. And, you know, with lifestyle medicine, we just have such a wonderful, unique set of tools that we weren't given when we graduated from medical school. These things can actually you know, not just reverse diseases, they can change people's lives. So, you know, not getting this information to them, I think is just wrong. And, you know, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> and part of our job is to really educate and empower the patient um, so they can take control of their own health. And sometimes I just look at it as just planting seeds um, because, you know, the Rotary Club thing, they were all eating their animal foods. It was during a meal that I was talking. But, you know, so these are the first seeds that I planted and some other lifestyle medicine doctor or some other person is going to come water those seeds and somebody else down the road, a friend or a family member may tell them the same thing and then finally they will sprout. So at least I, I can plant seeds at this stage. I think I agree with you and I think to be honest with you, I think people like us, we need to take this charge because there are so many half uh, hearted 
half knowledgeable uh, either they are you know different type of medical field like chiropractors and other things or maybe they are halfway health coach and they put so much information on youtube which uh, uh, which is not evidence based which is you know, completely wrong so i think to me not only this is important to teach the community but this is actually extremely important to provide all the people in our community evidence based truth and facts so our role is even bigger to police what's out there in social media. Otherwise, uh, one like I've seen some of the chiropractor, their view, their videos in YouTube has like five million views. Five million yeah. views, you know. So I think we are like we are actually behind in the mm -hmm. social media. Like you know, to me, we need to do more of it. Like we talked earlier. So uh, that brings my uh, next question. That. Uh, 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 both of you have, I've seen on Facebook, I've seen on YouTube, both of you have received many, many awards. Like Manish was the physician of the year at this hospital just a year or two ago. So take turn and describe each other's achievements and awards because the reason I want to, not because I want you guys to brag about it, but I want people to realize that to practice lifestyle medicine, you still can achieve many, many other accolades and many other uh, goals and awards you don't have to be like a pariah or like a, somebody who is like outcasted into medical community. You actually thrive as a lifestyle physician as if it's a mainstream, if not a leader in, in the medical field. I'll go first yeah. bragging about Manish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he um, was a full-time radiologist until December 31st, 2019. So he's been a full-time radiologist for the last 20 years. Um, last year, actually, he got the Physician of the Year Award at his hospital. And after 2018, after he got board certified in lifestyle medicine, even though he continued to still have his radiology practice and wasn't practicing lifestyle medicine at all, he was still trying to help his fellow um, co-workers, you know, x-ray techs and ultrasound techs and everybody with healthy living. So he actually started a... Um, uh, well, health and wellness club at his hospital. And this health and wellness club would do meditation once a week and they would do a plant-based potluck once a month. Um, I mean, he didn't get the physician of the year award because of that, that was all radiology, but still I was so proud that he was making an effort in whichever uh, field he was in, whichever location he was in, a place like a hospital, he still found a way to bring pillars of lifestyle medicine to his fellow workers. Yeah, and I'm going to brag about her. <laughs> yes, I mean, she's been a wonderful physician in the Houston community for so long. And every there's a large society in town called Vegan Society of Peace. And they do, you know, the best uh, vegan physician of the year. And she was relatively new. And there's a lot of other physicians that are, you know, more, a little bit more well-established. But, you know, in 2000, uh, 2018 she won the uh, best vegan physician in Houston and you know everywhere she goes she was the best uh, ready uh, resident in uh, in internal medicine when she was there so I mean she's won Texas top dog awards you know her wall is filled with accolades so she is just an amazing person and I'm just happy to be you know working alongside with her yeah, I think that this is again a proof that uh, you know you can be lifestyle physician and can be still you know achieving as if you are a neurosurgeon or a cardiothoracic surgeon, if not more so than them. I think you are getting into people's you know heart, people's family, people community, and I think we are contributing you know much more than just cutting and moving on. I think uh, you know I think this is very commendable. So let me ask you uh, the next question that you've been part of many documentaries. I think I know two of them for sure. So please tell us about them and how people can watch them. Um, so Code Blue, which uh, many of um, you guys know about because it's all about lifestyle medicine and Dr. Saray Stancic's um, journey in finding lifestyle medicine and healing her own self and her patients. That documentary were the associate producers of. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Endgame 2050, that one is more on the environmental aspect, but it also goes into eating for a healthier environment, a healthier planet. And at the end of that movie, when they go into the food and nutrition, both Munish and I are featured in that um, documentary. 
And then there's a new one coming out called The Land of Ahimsa. And this is all about um, kind of India and how India needs to go back to its roots of um, nonviolence and um, really become vegan. Um, so we're both featured in that one as well. Yeah, that's very really impressive. Are they, on, are they on Netflix or Amazon Prime or? So Endgame 2050, I believe, is on Netflix. I think it's on Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime, and it's also free on YouTube. So free you can watch it. the full featured film on YouTube. YouTube. Land of Ahimsa is not out yet. Right. Um, and Code Blue is on Netflix yet. Uh -huh. um, I know you can get the DVDs um, yeah. from the website. That's great. So uh, please tell us a little bit about your this uh, Peaceful Planet Foundation. Is it nonprofit and what are the activities? Yeah, so this is something that, again, you know, we're both very passionate about. This is something we started about three years ago. And this all sort of coincided about the same time, you know, we wanted to have a healthy community. And one of the places we, we saw that, you know, so many of her patients would tell her, that it would have been so much better if she had been exposed to these healthy tools, to yoga, to meditation, to breathing, all these you know, wonderful tools when she was younger. Then they would not have turned to alcohol or you know, sweets or desserts and that sort of thing. So part of the main, you know, one of the main missions of Peaceful Planet is to bring our tagline as peace, health, and wellness. And you can't have peace without if you are committing you know, violence to get your food. So that's part of our message that we need to eat in a compassionate way. So when we, and the other part is we need to practice how can we bring health and wellness to kids at a younger age? So we put together this program, we call it the 5M program, and it's uh, basically mindful breathing. It's basically mindfulness in schools program. So we take this to elementary schools and we've been to middle school as well. And high school and too. high school. Yeah. So we have a yoga teacher that sometimes helps us and sometimes, you know, we go ourselves. And basically we're trying to educate these people on mindfulness. So we start off with mindfulness breathing, mindful movement, which is, you know, some of the schools are touchy about using yoga as the official word. So we call it mindful movement. Instead of meditation, we call it mindful stillness. And then we say mindful nutrition or mindful eating, and we bring healthy snacks to them, all plant-based, all whole foods, so they'd get introduced. I mean, it's just amazing. In some of the schools we go to, you know, they have never seen a strawberry. The only foods that they know are potato chips. They haven't even know what a potato is. So just to educate them that they're healthy ways to nourish our body, nourish our mind, and bring them these healthy tools get them exposed to mindful breathing, you know, a little bit of meditation, a little bit of yoga, just getting young people exposed and excited that there is something they can do to help themselves and hopefully get them started on a lifelong, but they, you know, leading to holistic health and a peaceful life. So that's something we're really proud of and we really, and, you know, even with the pandemic, we uh, have a school that we've been working with and we were not certain what we were going to do this semester, but they have actually increased our program. Last year, we just did the sixth grade and they liked the program so much. This year, they're going to do it sixth, seventh and eighth grade. We're going to do the whole mindfulness program online. A wonderful yoga teacher is helping us. So we're really happy. So we actually have a full program to where, um, fortunately, we know a yoga teacher who's also a school teacher. So she created a 5M mindfulness program. So like he said, it starts with mindful breathing, mindful movement, mindful stillness, mindful eating, and mindful reflections. And each week is a different curriculum. Um, so it's, it's supposed to be a whole semester right. that uh, the kids go through this program. No, I mean, this is this is just so much, in my opinion, for me to even grasp. And you are doing it every day. I don't think physically, mentally, it's possible for two people to do this many things. So I really, really commend you on that. I don't think I've seen any physician couple doing so many things for the community, so many things for their patients, with so much passion, so much smile. I mean, this is very, very impressive. So let me ask you the current very hot topic. Now, we talk about COVID-19 and very high mortality in certain segment of population. 
And the data sometimes says that it's generic. Sometimes it says a lifestyle, sometimes it says obesity. I personally believe it's the lifestyle and obesity. So what are your views on that? Okay. Yes, Jeff. Okay, so, I mean, the data is clear. I mean, I know there's all sorts of reports in the media and sometimes it's hard to separate facts from, you know, things that people just, you know, post online or even on news services. People who have even the Italian data is now widespread and it's, you know, really available. 99% uh, of the people who had, uh, you know, bad outcome in Italy, they had some sort of chronic disease. And the more chronic diseases they had, the worse was their data in terms of hospitalization, in terms of death. So what are the diseases we're talking about? Obesity, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, asthma, chronic lung disease. All these diseases have clearly shown that if you have this disease, instead of just being a minor infection, something you may even get a little you know, cold or maybe you get a fever for a few days, these are the people who have these chronic diseases that end up in the hospital, that end up in the ICU, and worse, some of them pass away. And age is another factor. But age is also intimately related with lifestyle. In this country, people over 65, there are more people that have hypertension than not. So all these chronic diseases, whether it's cardiovascular disease, hypertension, obesity, as we get older in the American society, we have these chronic diseases. So it's kind of hard to separate, but certainly you know, all these are related to our immune system. So when you get these chronic diseases, you have immune dysregulation, and you know, these are the folks that are suffering from really poor outcomes from COVID-19, and my wife can add on. Yeah, so I tell my patients, you know, the things that I've been talking to you about all this time in terms of the six pillars of lifestyle medicine and how you need to practice them to avoid things down the road like cancer, dementia, heart disease, diabetes. Well, I need you to practice those now to avoid ICU bills next month. Um, and that is really kind of getting to some of my patients. They are making changes now because of COVID-19 that they have been reluctant to make in the future, in the past, um, because they are, I am pointing out to them the data between uh, immune health and our general health. Um, so they, and I believe um, it was a Dr. David Katz who said that within like, changing our diet to a healthy diet within like four weeks, our immune system starts improving. Um, so giving them that kind of information is helping them get motivated to really bring lifestyle medicine into their um, lives to deal with this pandemic. I think that's a big lesson. And I think uh, Dr. N uh, Neil Barnard, I think is pushing hard for yes. you know, having a, some kind of a Congress putting the clause that healthy lifestyle and becoming vegan and having ideal body weight is definitely for the next pandemic. Maybe it's too late this year. Maybe we mm -hmm. cannot achieve those goals within a year. But when the next pandemic hits, you know, whatever, whenever it comes, if we are prepared with healthy lifestyle and ideal body weight, we'll be doing better than what we did this time. So I think I agree with both of you. Next, uh, next brings an important question for all the physicians who will be listening to today's talk that what is the future of lifestyle medicine and how we can excite other physicians as much as you are excited every day to practice lifestyle medicine? Yeah, I mean, we think the future for lifestyle medicine is very bright. And, you know, uh, in time, we're going to get the insurance companies to reimburse a lot of the things that we're doing, having to do cash pay and creative ways of doing it. But, I mean, just the growth of American College of Lifestyle Medicine over the last few years I mean, when in 2017, I think I remember you saying that there were only 52 physicians who took the board examinations the first year. And when we, and you and I took it, I know there were other healthcare providers in that room, but they were almost a thousand people taking the lifestyle medicine examination. And every time we go to a conference, I mean, it's just, it's bigger and it's standing room only. So the word is getting out. And, you know, we all who are lifestyle medicine certified or even working towards that, or just open to this way of approaching the chronic diseases of their patients. We just need to, as you mentioned, get a louder megaphone, just let our voices be heard. 
that this is something that works and this is not just something that's helpful for the community, it's helpful for us. I mean, this is just, we feel good at the end of the day, you know, when someone's making these positive lifestyle changes. I mean, what's, you know, what's more exciting? We all went into this profession to, you know, do some good. And, you know, when people are slowly making the changes, you kind of see them, you know, come to fruition. I was actually on a call today. This woman uh, can only come on Saturdays. And she was a person who actually had COVID-19. So she said, I was in the ICU for how many days? Yeah, I'll tell you her story. So I've seen her for years and I've been talking to her for years about eating healthy and making these changes. Um, and she has asthma as well. So she actually was in the hospital for two weeks with COVID-19. Um, and when she came out, she said, I don't want to be in the hospital ever again. I'm wanting to make changes that you've been talking about this whole time. So of course I referred him to Dr. M, yeah. um, which is what, because we're both Dr. Chawla, uh, we go by Dr. M and Dr. B in clinic <laughs> when, when we have mutual patients. Um, so now she's like, not only is her asthma better, her high blood pressure medicines are coming off and she's losing weight. She has to buy new clothes because it's several inches less, but I'll let you. Yeah, so, so today she was saying she's a nanny. So she's, you know, in her fifties, and she says, I, she was a little bit on the heavy side. She says, when I climb the stairs, I would, you know, put one step on the stair and bring the other step. So she would literally walk up the stairs, you know, one step at a time. And now she says, the kid that I'm uh, taking care of, he's 28 pounds. And she goes, Dr. M, I can practically run up the stairs with this kid, carrying him in my arms. So I mean, she feels good. She's sleeping better. Her weight is better. I mean, she has more energy than she's ever, you know, that she can remember. She goes, I didn't feel this good probably in college. And this is a woman in her 50s. So, I mean, I just was on her phone call earlier today. And, you know, when you hear that, I mean, that's going to put passion in whatever you're doing. I mean, there's, as you mentioned earlier, there's so much physician burnout because we're doing things, we're writing pills, we're doing procedures. And we see that they're not getting them very far. They're back, you know, the next week or the next month. And we have to increase those pills. And, you know, when you can actually see them getting better, having more energy, and they're just loving life and enjoying it, it just makes you feel good. So this is, you know, physician burnout is a big issue right now. And this is something if we can get more and more physicians exposed to lifestyle medicine, they don't have to even switch over completely. Just use it as one tool in their toolbox. Not every patient is going to say, okay, I'm going to change right now. But we as physicians have a responsibility to make this available to them. And if they get this in their toolbox, they can feel more comfortable talking about nutrition, talking about exercise, talking about stress management. And, you know, we were amazed. They'll be amazed. The patients are amazed. It just never gets old when patient says, I'm feeling so much better. Yeah, I think when we started our medical school, I remember first three months, first six months, my dreams were just, just like what dreams I have right now as a lifestyle physician. And somehow yeah. as we go further and further in medical school, go through intensive residency fellowship, we start mm -hmm. to somehow get into this robotic modes. And I think mm -hmm. this lifestyle medicine has brought the same kind of thinking and passion when I was a first year medical student, you know, like at that time, I wanted, and like I remember, I was part of a big, uh, it used to call National Service Scheme (NSS) in India, and we mm. would go to small towns and in the summer summer breaks, and we would just educate the whole community. And those kind of dreams and passion I had in the first year of medical school, same thing I have as a lifestyle physician. So I agree with you. It has brought the same kind of uh, energy back into me when I was 20, 18, 20 years old. So, you know, it's good for us. It's good for the community. But let me ask you one more last question. Sure. I think uh, I'm excited. You both are excited. But the country is not excited yet. Country is not ready yet. I still see so many people who actually want to go to a traditional pill and procedure doctor than go to a lifestyle doctor. Because changing lifestyle, like you said earlier, is a little harder in the current environment in America. So mm -hmm. how can we motivate and how can we actually gather more people to come on our side instead of just keep ignoring their health and keep going back to this pill and procedure side? Yeah, doing, you know, what we're doing right now, I mean, having platforms like Facebook Live, you know, having this wonderful podcast that you're doing, 
you know, all the things that you're doing in the community, all the things that we're doing in the community, and, you know, just educate. When people hear it, you know, the what is that they, you know, first they ignore you, then they fight you, then they join you. So, you know, we've been ignored and now we're actually seeing some skirmishes, which I take as a good sign. So we're getting noticed that, you know, the people in the keto camp and the paleo camp, you know, they're, you know, starting little skirmishes. So which is good and means that, you know, there's enough of us that we are, you know, perceived as something real, something that's not a fad. And we have the science on our side. So all of us, as you mentioned, we need to do our part, you know, let people know this stuff works, let other physicians know. And, you know, when I was working in the hospital every day as a radiologist in the lunchroom, I mean, these, uh, some of the physicians would not just sit in the table that I'm sitting because they know what I'm going to talk about, but other physicians would come by and they would ask questions and I was happy to answer their questions. I said, you know, if you want to just, you know, come to our clinic or, you know, come to Bandana's clinic at that point, you know, we're happy to teach you, you know, we're not, we, we're not going to try to steal your patients. If they want to move to a plant forward diet, we'll help you. You know, this is something that's going to help you. It's going to help your patients just try a little bit of it. And, you know, part of it, you know, there's time constraints and other things, but really, you know, when you take the time to talk to the patient, not everyone's gonna be ready, but like uh, Dr. B said, you know, we're planting seeds. Sometimes somebody else planted the seeds and we're watering them and seeing the sprouting. Sometimes we plant the seeds and they sprout a little bit later on. But all of us just need to do our part and, you know, get the word out. And once the word gets out, we hit a critical mass, it's gonna grow and it's already growing. And you know, we all of us want this to grow at a little bit faster rate than it's growing, but I think it's, it's coming, the best is yet to come. And I agree, I think the best way is for us to be a good example and for us to spread the word out there lovingly um, and kindly. I've had patients who were keto patients and I very much tried to understand their perspective. I have to remind myself that, um, you know, when I'm with the patients, I need to be present with them. I need to listen to them. I need to try to understand before I try to get myself understood. Um, so finding the common ground, like with that keto patient or uh, paleo patient, I find the common ground of we both don't like processed foods. We both think processed foods are not good. So we have that in common. And then I bring in the blue zones or evidence um, that shows that plant-based diets are healthier. Um, so yeah, I think we just keep doing what we're doing, but do it lovingly and set a good example. No, I think uh, I, can, I can just see in both of you that loving, being kind is just a natural to you, both of you. I can sense it, I can feel it. And I think all your patients are lucky and fortunate. All your community is fortunate. And to be honest with you, I think what you are offering to this world. I've not seen that many couples offering. So very, very commendable. You are our role model. We're definitely gonna learn from you. I think our movement is gonna get higher and higher up because of people like you, couple like you. So keep doing the right thing. We all are with you. We're gonna we keep supporting. You are coming back to our page twice a year for the next 50 years. So <laughs> we'll be together. So, so stay well. I'm gonna go offline and we'll talk a few minutes offline and uh, we'll catch up. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. much. Yeah, thank you.